Evening. I'd like to call the Goche City Council meeting to order tonight, Tuesday, June 7, 2022, at 6 30 p.m. I would request that you please turn off your cell phones or silence them and any other electronic devices. I'd like to ask our planning director, Mr. Scott Ankerson, to lead us in the prayer and the pledge by Councilman George. Hey, Father, we bow before you tonight. We give you honor, praise, Thank you for our many blessings, God. God, I just want to thank you for our city leaders and staff, God, and just uh, be with us as we continue to do our best to grow this city in a positive direction as we seek your wisdom, Father. Uh, give us, uh, God, just give us wisdom tonight in this meeting in unity, and uh, most of all, we give you thanks for your Son, Jesus Christ, and his sacrifice on Calvary's cross for our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Will please join me for a pledge? A pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Ankerson, and thank you, Councilman George. I'd like to recognize a few people here this evening. We have former Mayor Pete Pope here and also former Mayor Torchison here. So welcome to tonight's meeting. Thank you. Do we have any changes to the agenda order approval, Ms. Jancy? Do we have a motion for agenda order approval? So moved. Motion by Councilman College. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilman George. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries. That brings us to our announcements by our city manager, Ms. Polly Yancey. We will be having kicking into summer at Bayfield Park tomorrow, June 8th, starting at 10 a.m. until 12 p.m. There will be a kickball game and a popsicle party. Goshe's farmer market, Farmer's Market will be June the 11th, starting at 8 a.m. until 12 p.m at George Martin City Park, and Tasty Thursday will be June 30th, beginning at 11 a.m. at the Sand River Mall property. Thank you, Ms. Shancy. That brings us to our presentation agenda. Our first is recognition of retirement for Shannon Myrick. Shannon, if you'll come up to the front, we'll recognize you. In honor of your service, Shannon D. Myrick, congratulations on your real reserve retirement after 31 years of service, outstanding and dedicated service. In sincere gratitude for the assistance, guidance, and outstanding leadership you've provided to our citizens for so many years. You have set an example to be followed in the future and cherished by those for, of us that were fortunate enough to have experienced it for ourselves. Go to Mississippi, Nature's Playground, May 2022. Happy retirement. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have anything you'd like to say? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Sure. 
Her position is an administrative assistant the police department. It's very behind the scenes, keeps the department going. Uh, do that for 31 years. She has a lot of dedication in serving the public. And it's been an honor and privilege to work with you for so long. I hope you enjoy your retirement. I appreciate it. Good I'd just like to say I'm so happy for you. You started, I mean, I started uh, 28 years ago and I walked in the door. You were the first one I met. 27 years later, you're the last one I saw as I retired. And uh, one thing I can say, you've always been a loyal friend. You're always ready to go to battle when it was time to go to battle. And there were times I had to pull you back. <laughs> but this department will never be the same without you. And I'm going to miss you and love you and best best wishes in your future endeavors. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. Sam, we're going to get the We can not stand up. your children and grandchildren. I am ready. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, that brings us to a proclamation of the mayor and council of the city of Goche, Mississippi. Do we have anybody who served in the United States Army here? If you would please come up to the front, we'll present this and um, recognize you all. of the Mayor and City Council of the City of Goshen, Mississippi. Whereas on June 14, 1775, the Second Continental Congress established a Continental Army to secure the common defense of the original 13 colonies during the War of, for Independence. And whereas the United States Army exists to preserve the Republic and defend the liberty and freedom of its citizens and national security and interests. And whereas many citizens of Goche served our country as members of the United States Army and gave the ultimate sacrifice in defense of the nation, and whereas it is proper to recognize the United States Army annually on its birthday and thank those who have served and those who have presently served in our nation. And now, therefore, we, Mayor Casey Bonham and Council of the Goche, City of Goche, Mississippi, do hereby proclaim June 14, 2022, as birthday of the United States Army. In Goche, Mississippi, and urge all citizens to join me in this worthy observance, and witness whereof I hereby and to set my hand and cause the seal of the city of Goche, Mississippi to be affixed on this, the seventh day of June, 2022. Casey Vaughn, Mayor for the city of Goche. Thank you.
Now we have a proclamation of the mayor and council of the city of Goche for Juneteenth. Is anybody here with their organization for our city event for the Juneteenth? Whereas Juneteenth is the oldest known celebration that represents the symbolic commemoration of the ending of slavery in the United States. More than two and a half years after the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation, and whereas the celebration of Juneteenth is inclusive of all races and ethnicities, religions, and nationalities, recognized by Americans everywhere as a symbolic milestone in our journey towards a more perfect union. And whereas, on a larger scale, celebration of Juneteenth reminds each of us in the precious promises of freedom, equality, and opportunity, which are at the core of the American dream. And now, therefore, we, Mayor Casey Vaughn, and the Council of the City of Goche, Mississippi, do hereby proclaim June 19th, 2022, as Juneteenth Freedom Day in Goche, Mississippi, and encourage all residents to become more aware of the significance of this celebration in African American history and in the heritage of our nation and city. In witness whereof, I hereby unto set my hand and cause seal of the city of Goche, Mississippi to be affixed on the seventh day of June 2022, Casey Vaughn Mayor, City of Goche, Mississippi. That brings us to our business agenda. Consideration for an abatement at 3640 Mackerel Drive, Goche, Mississippi, James Eric Minor by Planning Director Scott Anderson. Thank you, Mayor. This is a asking council to consider a of 3640 Mackerel Drive. The background on the property we received several complaints from uh, citizens regarding multiple code violations of this property as it pertains to the care and maintenance. Uh, the code violations were reviewed by our uh, code enforcement department, and the uh, violation file was opened against the property on November 18, 2020, for damage of, to the inside and outside of the structure. At that time, we went in and we actually uh, looked at the entire structure and it was deemed condemned, not habitable. Then uh, this decision was made due to multiple life safety issues, both on the inside and the outside of the structure. So the property shows the name of James Eric Minor, which has been redeemed by a Shilpit M. Honeycutt public notice for this uh, abatement and council hearing was posted and mailed to the owner as required by law. The vacant notice was also, has also been sent to the alternate address of the property owner to ensure that it's been provided adequate notice that the city of Goshe intends to clear and demolish this property to help make the area safe and protect the nearby residents from the dangers caused by the abandoned their property. Re recommendation staff recommends that city council approve the abatement as presented and move forward by taking action after the 10 day statutory appeal period from the date of the council action adjournment. If approved, council may charge the cost as a lien against the property to be collected upon sale of the property, collect the cost through civil proceedings, add $1,500 or 50% to either of the above collection methods. Code enforcement officer requests that city council approve this abatement for demolishing the structure and clear the entire lot in accordance with the city code. I've included pictures of the property, the posting, the personal information, uh, and if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. And we also have uh, one of our code enforcement officers here tonight. Thank you, Mr. Ankerson. Do we have any public comments? I'm on that behalf. If you want to state your name and address, then you have three minutes. Yes, sir. Noel Golf, 3500 Benita. And I'm actually the one that's buying that property as we speak now. We're going through a process. I'm going through the lawyers as we speak. But you can mine as Sheba with the uh, Millennium Company. So I'm trying to ask for continuous to try to get it cleaned up at least 30 more days. I have electricians trying to get it done. We have way more. There's in there worse, way worse than that. That's a 2010 trailer that we have. We have some of the 60s models in there. I think we took out before that one does, and they're new. Mm -hmm. Is that all you had, yes, Mr. Sir. Okay, thank you. Any other citizen comments? Do we have a motion? I make a motion that we approve the abatement at 3640 Mackerel Drive uh, to be continued for 45 days 
If such time as that property has not been cleaned up and cleared up in that 45 days, then the city will move forward with abating the property at the cost of the abatement plus 50% uh, of the actual cost of cleaning the property to be assessed as a lien on the property. Second. We have a motion by Councilman College, a second by Councilman George. Any discussion starting with Councilman George? Uh, I have no comment for this. Councilman Jackson? No comment. Councilman Gallat? You are the person that's actually buying this property? Yes, sir, I'm buying 11, 11 more in there. I'm 11 of them now, I'm trying to get 11 more. As we, probably next month I'll be closing completely, but right now as we speak, I'll have them took care of. I have the guys working for me in there, but I'm all cleaned up. Well, I would suggest you get this one cleaned up pretty quick because it looks pretty bad. Yes, sir. That's all I got. Okay. Councilman College? Just uh, be sure to work with our planning department and code enforcement. Uh, if they see you're making progress, they will give you some leeway. But if you're not making any progress, then we're going to continue with the abatement of that property. And I'm sure that, you know, if you do an 11, then there's some that are even worse condition than this one. Our code enforcement officers have cases on the, open on those ones also. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Councilman Anderson? No comment. Councilman Nell? No comment. I just want to thank our city staff. As you know, that area needs great amount of attention. So we appreciate y'all trying to get that area cleaned up for the residents down there. Mr. Goff, we appreciate you investing and hopefully you'll get it cleaned up as you noted in your comments. There's a lot worse down there, but we're working to get them cleaned up also. Yes, so thank you for your investment. With that said, we have a motion by Councilman College, a second by Councilman George, all in favor? Motion carries. <clears throat> that brings us to business agenda item number two, consideration for abatement of 7300 Ru River Music, Goche, Mississippi, Oliviera, Rodrigue D. Andrea Day by Planning Director Scott Ankerson. Sir, thank you, Mayor. We're asking the council to consider abatement of 7300 River Music, Goche, Mississippi. Some background on this property, the property is 7300 River Music. It's been, uh, there's been an open case with code enforcement since July of 2021. Code enforcement letter was sent to the owner on July 21st about the condition of the property, especially with it being overgrown. And we received no response or action from the owner. A year later, a complaint, another complaint was made to the code enforcement office by a concerned citizen regarding the maintenance care of the property. The property has been without power and water for at least two years and become well-known dumping ground for other people's trash that live in the area. A year later, on May 4th, 2022, an abatement letter was sent to the owner, but the code enforcement officer received no response from the letter. Property taxes are delinquent the last two years and have not been redeemed by the owner. That time, so at this time, the decision is made to demolish and clear the property due to having no response from the owner, the length of the history on this lot, and the unsafe, dilapidated structure of the code enforcement office. It appearing to have been abandoned for at least two years and the property being menace to the city of Goshen. <coughs> Uh, and you, I've included pictures, so you, the pictures speak for themselves on this property. The, the house is basically a roof with stud walls and no exterior or interior finish on that wall. So the code enforcement office requests the city council approve this abatement for the demolishing and clearing the entire lot to secure accordance with the Mississippi Code. If approved, the code enforcement office recommends the city council charge the cost as a lien against the property to be collected upon the sale of property and add 1,500 or 50% to the method. So I've included the pictures of the uh, property posting, property information, uh, and uh, case history on this property. And again, I'm here to answer any questions you may have about it. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Do we have any citizen comments? If we do, stand up, state your name, and you have three minutes, and your address, and you have three minutes. Yes, uh, Jefferson Gotti. Uh, one five two six one Harrison Place in Harrison, Mississippi. That's where I live. Um, I bought the property and uh, I already paid the taxes. Uh, I have the lot clean. It's all clear right now. And uh, one uh, has at least like a month to start to fix the house and uh, have everything ready. I wanna. Uh, I have the lots of right agreement, I have the pictures, I have a proof that that is paid and everything here with me. And also I have the deed because I'm a seed, it doesn't show my name yet. 
How much time did you say to, you would take to start fixing the house? Uh, I can start to, to fix probably in, in about two to three weeks. Okay. okay. You a lot. Did you say the property has already been cleaned? Yes. He we said it was some money. Okay. I can confirm that they have began cleaning the lot. There's a there's a bobcat or skid steer on site in the dumpster, so they have began cleaning. Any more comments? Okay, thank you. Any other citizen comments? Do we have a motion? I'm going to make the similar motion that we did for the last time. We will work with planning, if you will work with the planning department, that I say we approve the abatement of 7300 for River Music, Goche, Mississippi, to be uh, <clears throat> delayed by 45 days uh, pending owner. Uh, improvements to the property if such time as that is not taking place then we will move forward with the abatement at the actual cost for the abatement plus 50 percent of the actual cost and as a penalty to be assessed as a lien on the property we have a motion by councilman college do we have a second second, second by councilman george any discussion starting with councilman george no comment councilman jackson no comment councilman glott how many days you going to how long before you're going to start on the house, you said? Two weeks. In two weeks? Yeah. Then I gave him 45 days. So. Okay. All right. Thank you. Councilman College? Same thing. Work with our planning department and code enforcement. We'll work with you. Uh, I appreciate you coming to the meeting and letting us know. And you've already got some equipment out there. We're just following this for, for procedural purposes to make sure you follow through what you're planning on doing. Thank you. Councilman Anderson? No comment. Councilman Elvin? No comment. I just want to thank you for investing in our community and as you can see it needed improvement and cleaning up so you understand from our situation where we stand trying to make our city look beautiful and more inviting so we appreciate you investing and looking forward to seeing it cleaned up. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Motion carries. <coughs> That brings us to business agenda item number three, consideration for abatement of 7301 River Music, Goche, Mississippi, Eric McMahon by Planning Director Scott Anderson. Sir, Mayor, thank you. <clears throat> so this is a staff asking council to consider abatement of 7301 River Music. This is actually right across the street from the 7300 that you just heard. The property at 7301 River Music had an open case file with code enforcement since 2021. Code enforcement letter was sent to the owner July 21st, 2021, about the condition of the property, especially with it being overgrown and abandoned uh, and being un un unsecured. Code enforcement office received no response or action from the owner. A year later, on May 4th, 2022, an abatement letter was sent to the owner. However, code enforcement office uh, still has received no response from the owner. The property taxes for this property uh, have never been delinquent under the current owner, and this owner has an adjacent lot which is undeveloped and the taxes uh, are current for as well. However, none of the mailings from code enforcement to the owner were returned to sender, so the letters were received. Due to having no response from the owner, a decision has been made to have the city of Goshe make and demolish the dilapidated unsafe structure on this property to clear the lot at the owner's expense. Public notice for this, this proposed abatement and council hearing was posted and mailed to the owner as required by law. All reasonable steps have been taken to ensure that the property owner has been provided adequate notice that the city of Goshe intends to demolish and clear this lot if approved tonight. So recommendation once again in the Code Enforcement Office requests that the City Council approve this abatement for the demolishing and clearing of the entire lot to secure it in accordance with the Mississippi Code. If approved, the uh, Code Enforcement Office recommends the Council charge the cost as a lien against the property to be collected on the sale of the property and or collecting uh, civil proceedings and add $1,500 or 50% to either of those. And again, I'll include the pictures from the property, parcel information, and the code case file. I'll answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Mr. Ankerson. Do we have any public comments? No public comments. Do we have a motion by council to approve abatement at 7301 River Music, Gotcha, Mississippi, Eric McMahon, PID 871160780050? I make a motion that we approve the abatement at 7301 River Music, Gotcha, Mississippi, 
uh, and in addition to the cost of such abatement, a penalty of $1,500 to be assessed, all as a lien against the property. We have a motion by Councilman College. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Galat. Any discussion starting with Councilman George? No comment. Councilman Jackson? Uh, no comment. Councilman Galat? No comment. Councilman College? No comment. Councilman Anderson? No comment. Councilman Elvin? No comment. All in favor? Motion carries. That brings us to business agenda item number four, discussion regarding civil service committee appointment. We all know we have a um, spot to, that has to be filled before the next meeting. We received resumes um, for people interested. That was by Kim A. Flynn, John Hyatt, Phil Torgerson, and Carla Todd. Um, so we all should have reviewed those resumes. Um, do you, anyone have a motion or do you want to discuss your applicants? I make a motion that we reinstate Phil Torgerson back to uh, the Civil Service Commission. He's got 16 years of experience. I've served 16 years under his leadership on the commission. I think he'd be a perfect candidate for the position. We have a motion by Councilman Elvin. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Anderson. Any discussion? Starting with Councilman George. No. Councilman Jackson? No comment. Councilman Galat? No comment. Councilman College? No comment. Councilman Anderson? Uh, as Councilman Elvin said, Phil has a long experience on that commission and I think he'd be a good selection for the post. Councilman Elvin? I said what I need to say. I, I'd really like to see him back on the commission. He did a, a great service for the, the employees during his term. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? <coughs> All opposed? <coughs> motion is denied. That brings us to discussion. So we have three other three other appointees. Up. If I'd like to, I'd like to make a comment if I could. Okay. Uh, I've reviewed all these resumes and based on uh, my past experience and what uh, Carla Todd has done for this community of Jackson County as a whole, I think she'd be an outstanding fit for Civil Service Commission. In addition to her years in the military and her exemplary education, she's also worked for law firms where she was consulting specifically on employee labor relations and in addition was dealing with human resources with 65 employees. Uh, I think she'd be a fresh face to planning commission and would bring a, a, a great insight walk, working alongside with uh, with our latest appointment, Dorothy Shaw and current Doug Manster. So I'll make a motion to appoint Carla Todd. Second. We have a motion by Councilman College to appoint Carla Todd. A second by Councilman George. Any discussion starting with Councilman George? Um, I'd like to second what Adam said. Uh, Carla is somebody that I've worked with for many years and known her for a long time. She's been very dedicated to Gaucher. Um, she has a, a, a very impressive resume. Uh, she brings a lot of positivity. Uh, she brings good morals. And I think that not only the employees will like her, but her fellow uh, civil commission members are going to enjoy working with her too. Councilman Jackson? No comment. Councilman Galat? No comment. Councilman College? I said what I had to say, thank you. Councilman Anderson? I think she's a, a <coughs> selection for the post. Councilman Elvin? I know Mrs. Todd very well as well, and I think she'd make a good uh, council, I mean, a board member, and uh, she'd do a good job. Okay, thank you. Um, as Councilman College and Councilman um, George both stated her resume and I've known Miss Todd for a long time and she served our community well in the chamber aspect and also her service to the military and her service to her employees and her other careers so um, she is a long time resident of Goche and continues to reside here and promote our city in a positive light so I think she'll do a great job if appointed. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Uh, all opposed? I don't oppose, I abstain. One abstained. 
and six um, yeas. So motion carries. That brings us to business agenda item number five, approval of the docket of claims that's been presented to us by our city clerk. She has, it's been online posted for review. Um, so that is our presentation. Any public comments about the docket of claims? Do we have a motion? I make a motion we approve the docket of claims, provide that all entries thereon are true, correct, properly entered, and not fraudulent. We have a motion by Councilman College. Do we have a second? Second. A second by Councilman Gallat. All in favor? Motion carries. That brings us to our consent agenda. All these will be approved in one motion unless somebody wants to pull one. One, approval of minutes from recess council meeting held on May 17, 2022 and minutes from general work session held on May 24, 2022. Two, approval of water and sewer adjustments dated June 7, 2022 and the amount of 16,710 and 37 cents. Business agenda, um, consent number three, approval of amendments to the comprehensive fee schedule for the Parks and Recreation Department. Does anybody wanna pull one? I'd like to pull item number three for further discussion. Item three was pulled by Councilman College. Anybody else wanna pull another consent agenda item? Do we have a motion to approve one through two? So moved. We have a motion by Councilman George. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Gallat. All in favor? Motion carries. That brings us to approval of amendments to the comprehensive fee schedule for Parks and Recreation Department. I just had a couple of quick questions. Uh, I guess apparently there has been some, uh, some discussion or some people wanted to rent the basketball pavilions and just wondered how we came up with these costs as far as the rentals for these and if they're kind of just in line with what we're doing with the with our fellow communities mm -hmm. the amounts, um, we came up with you're not really going to find anything around here comparable Okay. Um, there are people wanting to have tournaments and they want to charge per team um, to come in and use the pavilion so that's how I came up with the cost. Okay. Um, the deposit if they are having a promoted event or a tournament is because they're going to need to use the controller which operates the scoreboard and to replace that is roughly $750. Sure. Um, we also looked at how do we allow a tournament without um, the community not being able to use the pavilion. So that's how we came up with the, if they're gonna have a tournament or a promoted event, it can only happen from eight to two, and then the public will still have use of the pavilion. Thereafter. Um, after that. So that's how we came up with the different times and things like that. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. I appreciate that. Um, based on that, I make a motion that we uh, approve the amendments to the comprehensive fee schedule uh, for the Parks and Recreation Department. We have a motion by Councilman College. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Gallat. All in favor? Motion carries. That brings us to our study agenda to discuss citizen comments. You can stand up here at the podium, state your name and address, and you have three minutes. So if you want to speak, come to the podium and state your name and address. Public comments on what you just passed? No, just any, any comment, comment any you want, sir. Well, there's somebody coming. <laughs> Uh, hello, my name is Rocky Godet, 1713 Al Albany Boulevard, Mem uh, Lake Woods Homeowners Association. I'm here to address two issues. First, our lake, it got overgrowth in it from Katrina, debris. I'm talking boats, trees, stuff like that. Then it got more in Zeta. And the last I spoke was with the your predecessor, I think it was Johnny Jones. Mm -hmm. He was trying to get county funds to have the lake drained, cleaned, dredged, or whatever, to put it back to its condition. Uh, I personally sunk $10,000 in that lake in 2006, having it cleaned up, only to have the, a neighbor on the other side call and say it was wetlands, which it was not. 
because I was apologized to by Charlie Robinson, Trent Lott, Gene Taylor, and the head of the Army Corps of Engineers, that it was not wetlands, and but it was too late. I had done spent all that money having the uh, back hose and stuff there, but it's the rest of the lake. It's overcrown with an invasive species, and I do have some other Lakewood homeowners, citizens here tonight, if they could stand up, because uh, that's the first issue. And the second issue is we were assured that our streets would be repaid. That has not happened. The council has changed, but you know it was sort of promised by the previous council, the previous members, and we still need our streets repaid and we desperately need our lake clean. It is a health hazard. It is alligator, snake ridden, uh, nutria, just anything that can go back there. Uh, my little dog was threatened by an alligator, so uh, there is one back there. And the dam is in bad shape, it needs to be looked at or serviced. And uh, we think the city, if they could find us some help through the county funds or whatever to take care of this issue, we'd greatly appreciate it. Yeah. And that's all I have to say. Well, thank, thank you, Mr. Kevin. Uh, so, as far as paving, we just got an update on that. Um, like about two weeks ago, that they're looking to, they're behind because of all the Highway 90 paving and all the other projects that the paving companies are having to work on. So, what we, October, I think they said they're going to try to do two years worth of paving. Is that what we're aiming for? We're aiming to have our list in before October, so we'll be first up and get both years done this okay. year and next year yeah. at one time. So you guys are on that list. You're actually at the top of the list. Um, so as soon as they can get moving and get done with the other projects, that'll happen. I know it seems like we keep being told that, but yeah. it's very, very slow. And we know as good as anybody, it's very slow. <laughs> Is there anything you can do, I mean, y'all can do at the council about the lake, with, you know, trying to get the county... So does that lake tie into a body of water? I mean, does it tie into the bayou? It does drain. The, the city streets drain into the lake at the north part, and it does have a dam that overflows into... Bayou. A, yeah, a little bayou and then to the Gulf. It doesn't have tidal flow. Yeah. Is this a man-made retention pond? Yeah, yes. it's a man-made lake, part of the subdivision, and as I understood the DMR's ruling through the email, I asked for an update to that. Okay. And from my experience last night, but um, as far as the invasive species. Yeah, so they Yeah, and they said that it was a private lake and told them the residents that they met with, they called the names that they need to get a pond management company and work with the Mississippi. I have an email here. I'm trying to find Home it. Extension Service. Yeah, Home at Mississippi. Mississippi Cooperative Ex Extension Service. Yes. Yeah. Right. Mr. Yoga, so, there's a there's an agency around Jackson in the north part of the state, I think, that handles these ponds and lakes, whether they're private or whatever, I believe. Just like the DMR handles tidal flow estuaries that we have down here, and they're cleaning the, molest the molested grass out of the, the tidal flow areas, but they can't go in the lake. But there are agencies that do the lakes, and we need to find out who that is and get them down here to, to look at the lake. I talked yeah. to Joe today, Joe Sprague is on the phone. And he said because it's a private lake. It's owned by the HOA. It's owned by, they're, they're going to have to do it. Privately. It's a lake yeah. actually so, owned. It's a private when you yeah. click on there on GIS. Well, there there are apparatus, machines and stuff that Mr. Are clean that lake. You know. Yes, and we did get an update as Miss Shancy said. It literally was less than an hour ago. She reached out for to DMR for um, an update so we could provide it if anybody came. So we're just now getting it less than an hour ago. But they did mention some agencies that we could contact and try to put y'all in contact with to help you. So we will reach out. Unfortunately, the residents they notified or met with was on the other side of the lake. It's none of the residents from your side of the lake. So we need to make sure everybody's working together and maybe we can get with Councilman George and pick a day, the city manager and have like a town hall meeting regarding the lake and the issues and try to help get y'all some help on that. Yes, and Mayor. And then, uh-huh. Mr. Godet, y'all should work on this 
as soon as possible because if it's a giant molestus of Sylvania grass that's growing in there, it's going to destroy the lake. It's going to kill all wildlife will leave. You won't have, exactly you won't have a gator. You won't have any wildlife <laughs> left. No fish left or nothing. It's going to smother everything out. So the sooner y'all get something done, the better. And That's the, the city streets does drain into this lake. That's why I brought it to the attention. You know, the natural flow of the water from the north side, it does drain into this lake, although it is privately owned. When I tried to clean up my section, 156 feet in 2006, a neighbor on the other side of the lake had called the DMR. Unfortunately, I had went to visit my grandmother in Seattle, Washington, who had a heart attack. I get a call, Charlie Robinson put a stop work order on my property. I got a call from another neighbor. This is not something new. I've been working on this for years. Uh, but when they realized it was owned by the homeowners, they apologized, but they had done cost me a small fortune trying to clean this lake up. And it's, uh, I don't think the homeowners should be burdened with any more cost to clean this lake. I mean, it is a invasive species, just like the, uh, Miss Nancy, I think we should look into the fact if it was that drainage from our streets going into that lake and, the, and that giant Sylvania is taking over the lake and it's going to clog it up to the point that it could cause flooding, uh, maybe that we got a problem too. Right. I might have a little help with this. I, I know a little. My buddy's got a pond. Mr. Yogan we, had a pond by the old house, junior high. You drain it, dry it, push it. If this is a private lake and it's built, it should be clay lined. Once it's dry, that clay liner is hard. A piece of equipment such as a bobcat can push it. Uh, I looked at doing a pond with my dad 40 years ago. I know about pond management. After you push it, you line it with lime, and you go in. Okay. They drain that pond, get some equipment, push it. That's the answer. Oh, can you state your name and address for the record? For the yes. record. David Clean, 2509 Austin Drive, go check. Thank you. And also, um, Mr. Goda, about your um, streets, we spoke with the Public Works Director beforehand, and before any paving does, there's some issues that need to be addressed, and she's going to get with our Public Works Service Provider and ride that area and see what they can temporary fix or patch until they get it paid for you. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna circle up and try to get. Like I said, I think we're gonna we need to have a meeting with the uh, residents there meet with these agencies or get the information on these agencies, reach out to the county, see how they can assist, they can, and, and go from there. And just one other quick thing. If the dam does break because it's been stressed from Katrina and Zeta, it's going to take out that road that's a city street behind it. I can almost guarantee it that water's going to cut loose and it's going to wash out that road to that other neighborhood. Do y'all know what the name of that is? Robert Hiram. Robert Hiram. Okay, thank you, Mr. Goodhead. Any other citizen comments? Want to stand up and state your name and address? Yeah, I'd like to state my name and address. Okay. Hi, uh, my name is Bill Torres. We're 319 here in Go Central City. And this is honestly not here you know, uh, about this condition or thing. That's fine. I mean, it's good. But I would like to talk about briefly is about the uh, BP farms that are ordered each year to really different municipalities. Uh, Can you speak up a little bit? So I don't really work. Oh, she's a big All of us here. But, you know, each year, there is a billion dollars, but I call bucket money, that goes you know, to different municipalities based upon applications of different projects that are, that are submitted on that. And this year, our city did not get any DP money. But it's my understanding we didn't even apply any money this year. And I'd like to know what, what what went through that process to not see possibly getting the answer We didn't apply for money last year to apply in June. We didn't apply for money last year because of people recall when we applied for money last time when we went to the legislature and really pushed to get our project done, we said that we would not come back and ask for money the very next year. And that's why we did not apply last year. But we did get money in capital expense funds. We just did not get it through the store funds. We are applying this year. 
but we had told them when we got the money that we would not come back the next year. So this council agreed not to uh, come back this year? No, that's what we all, when we were up there at the legislature, that's what we kind of told them. So we are applying this year. We are applying this year. Okay. It's, it's in that was the deal when you were made, when we were all up there. That's what our yeah, record. I, I was up there. I never made a deal about the club. Well, they when we were meeting with them, they recommended us not to that they would take they would get it through other other means for us to get our projects, and they recommended us not going through that process again. And let me say something else. We did do a joint application with the Mississippi Songwriters for the Performing Arts Center. And it was... With this year? Last year. The one you're saying why we didn't apply. We did do an application, and it was very well done. And I worked on it personally, myself, with them. We had over 125 letters of support. Probably more than any other project up there. That the legislation just finished this year that you submitted to. We submitted so in June. Point, in June. Yeah. He's saying that agreement. we just submitted it and they didn't no, no, approve it. Last June. Current legislature year that just ended. Right. Okay? Right. Which we, we, made, we made an application for that money. It was under the Mississippi Songwriters Association. And it was done last June of 2021, which meant that we consider it in fall or January of 2022. So yes, we applied. Okay, so I'll so the impression we didn't we didn't have any application. We did a joint application with them. We provided a letter of support and we assisted in providing it because it was the performing arts center that we ended up getting the money through capital expense. Okay, so was anybody made a deal not to apply for the next year? No, I just no, said we are we are fine. All right. Fair enough. Any other citizen comments? I know you're waiting. <laughs> you're, you're chomping at the bit. Claim to file a line off the drive. I got a bucket list. I'm sorry, so so much of it, but I've been busy with life. My dad passed. Uh, I had a stroke. <laughs> I've been alive. So I got my feet underneath, and I got a few issues. Uh, one of them is the drainage project I've been screaming about for 20 years. Like this would be fair, 15. Uh, behind the house there, through that right away. I know y'all familiar with it. There's five trees in the way. That's what I started with 15 years ago. Hurley Razor Lot lied to my face about it for four or five years and stopped me from getting anything done. Hurley Razor will not talk to me this day about it. He's embarrassed. So then I come up here and I say what I just said and said I would get the money personally and get it done. The mayor at that time laughed at me. So we'll good the luck. We do that all the time. We had we, we try to get money. Go get it. Two days. Two days. I had a check for that one. It was emergency funds. It went for the whole project. But it got us to the head of the line to get the money to get the project done. Didn't get done. Well, it got done. They got paid. It didn't get done. I worked with senior more engineering to verify it was going to happen. It wasn't happening. I complained. Uh, Tally asked for more money. I got mad and had to leave because I was going to go to jail to push the issue. Regardless, the city has spent over $100,000 on an engineering plot of it to see what had to be done. They spent all that money on grants and different stuff. We got to get it done. These five trees exist to this day. They are blocking that right away. Recently, you put a culvert through the yard of I forget Charles' last name, at the end of Oxford, but you didn't want to dump water in his yard. Cool, it's done. Five trees aren't gone. At this point, um, even we move five trees, it will keep us from flooding bad, but the growth is coming up and was not removed in the first time. The quality control guy with CMO Engineering stood there and told me that they're kicking the can down the road. This job's not going to get done. We'll be back at this in a couple of years. Regardless, you got the culvert in. It's not quite finished. I talked to Jimmy McElroy today. Jimmy's going to get some rocks around the end of that uh, culvert. Was it 
didn't get done. I've asked to get that done. It's been five months. Jim didn't know about it, he does today. Eight months ago, the same river power went in there and replaced the cable. They moved two trees out the way, left the stumps. I complained about it, but it fell on deaf ears. I talked to uh, Mr. Mills today. Mr. Mills did not know anything about it. He's going to look at that tomorrow. The property adjacent to where this blockage is, the grass is chest high in the backyard. You can't barely see the back windows in the house, because it can't cut the yard. It's, it stays so wet for so long, by the time the renter can mow the grass, his, his private mower won't do it. It's over knee high. You need a bush on, you need commercial equipment. I talked to the property owner today. David owns uh, Jerry's Palm, a bank leader. I talked with him about the garbage that's been dumped in the right of way. There's a dresser or some other debris in the right of way that needs to be cleared. I took pictures of it. I called code enforcement today. They have not called me back. I've been working on all day. That's fine because the urgency was Jimmy's coming in there to weed eat tomorrow to get that right away where it will drain water. If anything goes wrong, it doesn't drain. The drainage that comes out of there in the water, I can block it with my foot. That's all the drainage there is. There's five massive oak tree, uh, pine trees over here have the ground level raised three feet. Where it sits over here, where they, Joe Talley chopped the roots out with an ax. Charged y'all how many thousands of dollars to get that done. That heavy equipment he brought in there, he didn't do anything. I watched him. I complained about it. Anyway, regardless, the neighbor's fence adjacent to that one spot has fallen over the chain link fence. I can't even walk it. When we get a flooding rain, I have to go out there with a rake and clear it because my yard floods. Was this okay. doing NRCS grant? Yeah, yeah sure? we've had NCRS, and then we used, before NCRS, we used, he's correct, we used BP funding to clean the ditch. So can we get with us, get Councilman Jackson, mm -hmm. us with Public Work Ramona, and there's we have a meeting with you. That have to go. It keeps everything bottled. This is the one I went. He came to a council meeting. And I went and got us the first NRCS grant you got. I called, reported it. We went through the whole process. You got a almost six hundred thousand dollar grant to do that ditch. The problem is, is it was the stable. You know what I'm talking about. You said the electrical work and all the things that was I, in there. All kind of utilities that are laid in this ditch so they went in and they cleared the ditch there were some trees that had remained and they made these I don't know, the no trees. trees were removed well that, may I, let me say something on this um because this is one that I, I already addressed this many times i tried to get that one done remember that was when tally went through they did not clean the area just like he said but that was a contract, so I couldn't get on Clearwater to do it because Clearwater was doing basically a favor with the project that they did. When they did and went and put the um, the the um, culvert under the underground for the lady on the end, um, they did that based off of when they did the project. They had put a little ditch right through her yard, through the side of her yard. I'm just, you know, I know you know, but I'm saying for so the people that don't know, they put a ditch on the side of her yard that caused flooding in her yard. So I got with Clearwater, and the decision was to put the pipe, a drain pipe, underground so they wouldn't flood in her yard. But the trees, just like he said, were never removed. Those was on that contract. Some of the trees were painted to be removed, and they flag. still was not. They were flagged, yeah. They still was not removed on that contract. Even though this was a contract that was before me, I still was trying to push it to get them to clear those those trees. And he is correct. The tree, the three trees that he said that need to be removed, it's a valley area, probably this big. And I already addressed this. I spoke on this. It's a valley this big, and. This is the area of all that water. So leave or anything get caught up in that. All of a sudden, you got to fight. My yard fills up. I got to grab the rake, go out there. Are there utilities? Are there utilities in direct? On the three trees that he's talking about, there's no, no utilities on that. that that's, well, that's I'll, I'll the question because I'm, I'm hearing about a lot of information. Oh, sorry, well, I'm just wondering if there's utilities that, that are prohibiting the removal of those pine trees. Well, 
I was told that one time. Mm -hmm. Not I, was also, I was also told that these right of ways, single river power has got to replace them because they're coming up to term life as far as service. And they have. They replaced almost the whole perimeter of College Park at one time over the last 18 months. New, new power cables. New, new power cables. Utility poles too, or just cables? They're well, underground. underground. Oh, it's underground. Okay, yeah. it's all underground. Now, I was told Joe Town they couldn't dig. Nobody can dig. Oh, it's too much. It's gonna cost too much to dig. Sing River Power came in there eight months ago and dug down three feet. No problem. They dug three feet and laid a new cable. They dumped two trees out the way. Those. Stumps I'm talking about, I asked Mr. Mills to come get. Is this blocking the right way with debris that catches them? I've been told one thing, told another. Can we straight up lie to? I, that's why I'm here today, because I talk to different people and I'm told different things. That project needs to be addressed again. And that that's one of my five on this list. Can I move on? Well, your you three minutes wait. is, yeah, yeah just uh, go. Um, I'm a, I'm a, I'm or can we meet with you? Can can we address them? You contact us right after sure. the meeting and I'm we a, will I'm try to meet with them. The public so everybody knows because this needs to be addressed. Okay. Uh, the gunfire we had in College Park not quite 30 days ago, over 60 rounds. I called it in, made a report at 11, 21 p.m. on a Thursday in the teens. After I called in, there was another volley of shots. That was well over 60 rounds fired. I gave it 20 minutes, didn't hear it, drove up, and the new basketball court in the housing uh, apartments right there, three units were parked up in there. I don't know what happened. I called the news to get a report. Oh, called Go J Police. I ain't heard nothing. I'd like to know what that was about because my neighbors would like to go up and use that uh, swim pad. They're scared to go in that park. Well, I can assure you they can go there because there's cameras. Uh, if we had crime reports from the city of Goche like we used to have, people could read it and know what happened and not be afraid. Cameras don't stop bullets, though. Uh, it, well, regardless, but I it, the, 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 the fire hazard that's on, uh, on uh, Ladner Road, Martin's Tires, Raven's Tires, the old tire place is closed down, but there's a mountain of tires behind it. Fire chief here. It's not a code violation we're working on, yes, Mr. We're, we're, we're addressing that. I might be chewing a little tail, but let me tell you something. I appreciate the work that's been done on that um, large amount of Ladder Road. God, that was ugly. We abated that. that yes, we abated that's, that. That's nice. Uh, code enforcement. I've left two or three messages all day before, of course, but they hadn't got back to me. I don't know if Jim's going to clear that stuff that's been dumped there. There's been a car parked on the ladder on uh, Oxford Drive for two years. The tires are rotted off of it. Code enforcement can't do nothing about stuff on the road. It goes to the city. The city says we don't do nothing about parked cars as such because... That car can be removed. That, well, that's a, yeah. well, you know, I, I filed paperwork on it a month ago. Why can't we put a tow stick on it? The, the, the vehicle has not been tagged in two years. It hasn't moved in two years. But I'm told that there's no city ordinance on vehicles parked as yeah. far as not being tagged. That's not there. parked, though. That's... The really yeah, it's a bad it's, well, it's, it's an abandoned vehicle. It's got well, a 21 tag. It's parked. Nothing's been done. I've been asking over a year for it to get done. Uh, I've been asking code enforcement some other stuff. He has Start three other vehicles parked it. in the front yard. One of the truck's axle is in the mud. It's been there 10 years. One Mustang's been there for two years. They, they make lawn furniture out of it. They got lawn chairs around. The other vehicle has not been moved in a year. The boy. Always with his vehicles. He's driving a brand new vehicle now. None of that's going to get done. Help me. I want to help y'all too. Okay, we'll work on them, and you more than welcome to staff for the meeting, and we'll get finished on your list. Thank you, Casey. You're welcome. Any other citizen comments? Okay, I'll go to the mayor. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Pete. I'm Pete Pope, and y'all don't need any introduction here because I've been on both sides of the aisle here. <laughs> but I live at 2213 Sandalwood and Mr. Glock's beat, Warren. Mm -hmm. It upsets me to see contractors come in our beat and put their trash that they're getting paid for, and our city taxpayers are picking that trash up and taking it to the dump. Now, I had one problem before with you, Casey, 
and you went back and you got it straightened out on the tree deal over there. Mm -hmm. Well, they came in and cut two big trees down and went off and left it, you know. You went and told them and they fixed it. Mm -hmm. But Gordon, you need to clean our water up. Okay. Now, it's, uh, it, it's not looking well, good. Sound. You're saying that contractors are leaving stuff on the side of the I'm road? I'm saying that contractors will come in and be paid for the job. And they'll dump their trash out to the city, out on the city right away. And our city truck picks it up. They're, and they're the putting it out in front of the house that they're working on? Sir? They're putting it out in front of the house Certainly. that they're working they, on? Sir, there's a big old uh, <coughs> of, uh, parking down there right now under a big old tree that had been picked up. The contractor's way. All you need to do is ride through the beach. I see, see where that carpet is that was just put there on the street a couple of days ago. It's been along a couple of days. Mm -hmm. I just noticed that. My, my only concern is that it's not fair to the taxpayers I agree to be paying the trash that, that these contractors are getting paid for. We stopped that in Ocala. We had a similar instance where these people are running businesses from their homes whether it's remodeling homes or whatever they're doing and they bring their stuff home so they don't have to go to the dump 20 miles away they right. pay 50 or 100 dollars so they bring it home and put it out on the, uh, the nice street there uh westgate Parkway. this way, is on graveline that he's talking about yeah, I but, this was, I know exactly but we got about. waste pro involved and waste pro is now refused to pick it up because we found out they, they admitted they were doing a business and that's what they were doing but, but it, it's a pleasure we've come for our city council because this is democracy in action and i think we've got a good city and i'm extremely pleased with our police department and our fire department we've got as fine a bunch of officers here as anywhere in the state and i've worked for the law enforcement all my life and i want to commend you chief and your department for what you're going through okay Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Well, thank you, Mr. Some of the awards are going to change, hopefully, in the next election. Doesn't well, make a difference. Three is the biggest we, land mass in this city right now. We, we, want, our city, we want our city cleaned up all together. Don't so. give me a challenge. I, I, I might be your next opponent. Uh, <laughs> that'll be fine, because I'm not running again. You told me that the last time. Uh, 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 well, it's guaranteed this time. I'll be your age. Well, that's all I want is a donation out of you, and I'll clean her up. <laughs> Mr. Pete, don't leave. I did send you a text today. I don't know if you received it, but please wait till the city manager makes some comments before you leave the meeting today so you can hear some exciting news affecting your area. Well, I want to hear something exciting, and I want to hear from Gordon. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Pete. I appreciate you. Good friends. What a good friends for. Good evening. Uh, just two questions. Uh, going back to Let's our your name uh, and address. Hannah Wiley, 2309 Lewis Gate Drive. Thank you, Ms. Wiley. Uh, earlier you said something about Alvin Little Boy having some issues, and you said there was a person in here. That, who, me and you spoke with Ramona Morgan. I have heard of it. Yeah. I just wanted to know who I need to be talking to. Mm -hmm. And also, I, about two months ago, I called for the code enforcer, and I, I left a message, and I still have not gotten a call back. So is there a problem? Um, there shouldn't be. Um, we had a change in staff over there, but if you get after the meeting, you, um, the planning director, they report to him and he'll be glad to get your contact yeah, in. Your I don't know if I can still come to you or not. Okay, yes, thank sir. you. He'll be glad. Okay, thank I'm you, Miss Wiley. Oh, uh, the court. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Just making our kids have something to do. Not if they're out of school, that's good. So thank you guys. Thank yeah. you, Ms. Wally. And thank you for your beautification efforts in your neighborhood. Well, thank you, sir. I'm Steve Murrow. I'm at 1202 Gallery Street, Pascagoula. And you're wondering, what is this Pascagoula guy doing over here at O'Shea? Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm pleasantly pleased to hear somebody actually say thank you for the job that you do. Uh, the reason I'm here tonight, and I'll be very brief, Mayor, is that I'm running to be your next circuit court judge. And I can stand up here and tell you, those of you who know me, I've been practicing law almost 30 years, serving as a court judge for nine, I currently serve on the Mississippi State Ethics Commission. 
But one of the things that I think uniquely qualifies me for the position are the four years I served recently on the Pasquale City Council. I had the fortune to serve during the greatest financial crisis my city ever experienced. In the first 12 months on the job, I found we, we discovered a $14.5 million deficit and had a super fund site declared in my ward. I uh, had a friend of mine who works in Congress ask me uh, if uh, I was enjoying the position, and I told her that, and she couldn't believe that uh, how difficult it was. I appreciate the difficulty that every municipal elected official goes through. And you're wondering, what does that have to do with being a circuit court judge? Well, as you probably know, appeals from you and boards of supervisors go to circuit court. In the four years that I served, we had four different appeals from decisions that we made on the past people of the city council. And at no time did we have anyone who heard those appeals had sat in the seat where you sit. You have an opportunity for the next four years to have someone who may be called to sit in judgment on some of the hard decisions you make, who has sat where you sit, who has weathered the slings and arrows of your position, who's had his decisions questioned, and it's something that I think you ought to take advantage of. Uh, and that's why I'm asking for your vote and your support, and I told you I'd be less than three minutes. <laughs> Thank you all much. Thank I got you, a man. question Thank for you. Sir, are you going to continue to work in any law firm while you're the judge? I cannot. If you no elected, that position is full time, and sadly, I won't be able to work on the ethics commission either. That, that's been a real treat, uh, so to speak. Uh, it, it, some very interesting issues, and the ethics commission is really on the ground floor. They deal with the Open Meetings Act, Public Records Act, and ethics and government, and probably about eighty percent of what comes through the Ethics Commission involves municipalities and counties. Very, not too much state government. But, uh, but no, to answer your question, no. I'll That's what I was going to hear. I've not always be that way. Conflict of interest. Thank you, sir. Yeah. All right. Thank Can you. I file a complaint with you before you leave? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, give you I'll give you the Executive Director Tom Wood's number. I, I can't accept the complaints. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Right. Burris, for coming across the river to visit us. Any other citizen comments? No citizen comments, no more. That brings us to our city council comments. Councilman George, it's our first meeting, so we'll start with you. Um, I don't have a whole lot. Um, just appreciate everything everybody does. And we've been getting on, it's getting busy right now. It seems like summertime gets so busy because we have our regular city stuff we deal with, but then we also have a lot more maintenance that we have to keep under control. Um, there's a lot of good stuff that happen. I appreciate Clearwater and Ramona and everybody doing their job, police. Um, I know in my neighborhood we've had some issues and I, I think that hopefully they've been rectified and you guys have been patrolling a lot more, so I appreciate it. Um, but other than that, that's all I have. The uh, farmer's market this weekend. Go to the farmer's market. It's awesome. I love it. <laughs> Thank you, Councilman George. Councilman Jackson. Yes. Um, as Baycott Park, when you was addressing Baycott Park, um, I go out there every day. Don't miss a day. Um, even I took some of my scheduled time that I normally do for business in my recording studio, things like that. I put stuff aside to make sure that everything flows correctly in Baycott Park. I'm going to make a sacrifice for what's been given to our community. So. Um, um, like I said, I'm, I'm there every day, on the grounds, um, just like the police officers are on the grounds every day. Uh, I'm there to make sure that our children are safe. Um, I'm communicating with uh, a lot of people, which is this gave me a great communication with the, the um, neighbors and people who are abroad within the city of Gaucher. It really gave me a great connection with them because I talk with them all the time. If I see some new faces, I'm going to communicate with them. Um, so we're we, we definitely going to work through all the issues with the apartment complex, anything that's going on that affects Baycott Park and affect our youth. We're not going to allow someone to push uh, negativity that takes away from our children. That's just not going to happen. You know, I'm going to fight tooth and nail to make sure that our youth have something because that's what they need. They need an avenue, something that they can do 
so they can relieve the stress of doing nothing. You don't want them inside the house playing games all day, doing absolutely nothing. You need them out in the park. Um, you need them busy. Drain some of that energy. So, I mean, when we were children, we drained energy. That's what our parents did with us. They kicked us out. Go outside and play. Yeah. So, uh, with that being said, I, I'm not going to elaborate too long, because I know y'all ready to close this meeting, so uh, that, that'd be all I have to say, ma'am. Thank you, Councilman Jackson. Councilman I want to thank Scott Ankerson and his department for the number of abatements and cleaning up of property, too, not only, you know, all over the city. I think it's a testament to the new staff that you have as to what you guys are doing out there. Every council meeting we have three or four abatements on here. I know a couple of them uh, people have been recognizing here tonight that they're going to go back and hopefully clean them up. But I want to commend your department for the job that you guys are doing of making sure that this entire city gets cleaned up through abatements. Thank you, Councilman Goliath. Councilman College. Thank you back on what Councilman Goliath said. Keep bringing them to us. <laughs> we'll keep approving them. Um, with regards to the Parks and Recreation, um, you know, what uh, Councilman Jackson said, uh, Baco Park is a fantastic addition to this city. I know he takes extreme pride that it's in his ward and he's going to make sure that it's taken care of to the best of his ability. Uh, with regards to the rental of the pavilions and the basketball courts, I know there's been interest shown for rentals of our other facilities, <laughs> uh, particularly our indoor soccer complex. If we could discuss this sidebar afterwards or in the week and see what we can do towards possibly making that available to uh, private residents of the city for rentals. Uh, other than that, that's all I have to say. Thank you, Councilman College. Councilman Anderson? Uh, yes, Councilman Jackson was talking about draining of energy in, in the park. Well, it appears there's been some draining of energy in the park on vandalism. Uh, That's not negative, huh? I understand that they've been tearing off receptacle covers, tearing the restroom signs off, and painting the buildings. Well, I think it's time that we lock these parks up at night from a certain time during the night till, the, till morning hours, uh, where they just can't free flow in and out of there. And I'd also like to see our police presence in there at night. I don't know how many policemen we have they're on present. the roads at night, but they, they come out if, they, the if they're not on an emergency call, I uh, patrol our parks, you know, and uh, just keep a good eye on them because we need to catch these people and make an example out of them and stop this vandalism. And I, and I never even heard about the shooting that Mr. Kling talked about down there, 60-something gunshots. Is that true, Chief? No. It's not true? It's not. No. And, it was uh, not six shots. There was a lady that got fired with a car or two. You know, there was a lady that gang violence that also occurred on the same night in Moss Point, passing through the world. It's what I want. But there's gunshots going on there. The park. I am trained at long range shooting. I have 50 minutes to fire the head to Jarvis. Well, anyway, we, we, need to, we need to crack down on the vandalism, and we got cameras in that park, 32 cameras, I believe it is. We need to get the system that'll monitor those 32 cameras, whatever it takes. We're going to build a $2.1 million park, and we're going to spend probably thousands of dollars on cameras. Let's get the system that can monitor those cameras, and let's catch these little punks that's tearing everything up. They are. It's on Facebook. We put we them on there. We post on Facebook. They've been identified. They've been identified, but if we picked them up. Yes, the case is getting forwarded to the youth court on both of us. Good deal. Good job. Okay. I appreciate that. Two active cases at youth court. Not only was Baco vandalized, the city park. City was park was vandalized. And Shepherd. Shepherd. and Shepherd Park has been, been abused. Isn't that right, Jeff? Yeah, right. Well, we need to nip it in the bud as soon as we can, or it's just going to go on and on and on. <clears throat> okay. Our former mayor, uh, Phil Torgerson, made a donation to the park of like eight basketballs, I believe it was. Did we vote to accept that? No. I'm sorry? Did we vote to accept the donation? I don't remember that. He just took the donation down there and set it up on a basketball stand, around $150 worth of basketballs, and a stand, and he put a plaque on it, and the first night the plaques were just removed. Well, 
Hell, if it was kids, they would have stole the basketballs. They wouldn't have stole the bikes. They were moved on Thursday because they were in glass frames taped with duct tape on the side of that, and it was a hazard. And technically, anybody that donates anything to the city of Gosher, it has to be accepted by council, and it's supposed to go through the appropriate channels. Why did they explain it to it? Find Explain it to, to the man that donated them. Well, he was a mayor. former mayor. He should know. Well, he could have so, been, he could, he could have been explained to. We, I, we found them in the bathroom or chest. <coughs> I just happened to go out there and look at a problem with the football field with Mark and Ramona and I think you were with me, Scott. And so they had found them in the bathroom. So. I just left them out there, but it was Thursday, and I didn't have time to get the agenda already closed. So I will put it. I'm going to put it on the June, June 21st agenda to accept the donation. Good. I, I find it strange, though, that um, that former mayor in this city is trying to be pretend that he never was mayor and being silenced to the point that nobody thanked him for putting basketballs out there. Other than Councilman Jackson was there and he thanked him because the kids were ecstatic over it. Wasn't well, he didn't tell anybody. Apparently he told you, but nobody else up here knew until after the fact. What, knew about the basketballs? Yeah. Councilman Jackson did. Well, I'm sure he did. Good for him. We didn't. And it was done incorrectly, so maybe we should... Well, I didn't know about it until after it was done. Okay. I didn't know it was coming. Anyway, what's the, can I get a status on the design of the amphitheater, where we stand with it, and when maybe some bids are going to be lit? Yes, yeah, so walked in on us going through the 90% design with Nathan Gaw. Mm -hmm. And so they're finalizing. I've got all the general conditions. I sent them to Josh to be reviewed. He's making some little tweaks that we made in here that day in that meeting. And then it's going to be brought to you and John's going to come and he's going to present it to you and explain it to you. We took Nathan out there, showed it to him, the whole work. So he will be there with your final design to walk you through the final design and to go, to go out for bid. When is that? Probably, if it's not the 21st of June, it'll be the first meeting in July. Okay. That's all I got. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Anderson. Councilman Elvin? For clarification, is it improper for a private citizen to give a gift to kids? No, they can walk out on that park. And well, that's why I'm trying to find out. Does it have to be on the agenda and accepted if he gave it to private citizens? If he was giving it to the private citizens, no. If he was giving it to the city for use at the park, then technically the, the council needs to accept Was that. that what he did? He gave it to the city? No, he said to uh, the little plaque that was duct taped on the side of either end of it said to the citizens, uh, to the children of the city of Gosher. Well, he didn't walk up to Sam and Susie and hand them a basketball and said, this is for you to take home. His intent was for it to stay at the park and to be used by the children, which is fine. But anytime anybody donates something to the city with that basketball or whether, no matter what it would have been, the reason that's in place is because you need to decide whether you want to accept it because there can be liability with things sometimes. That's why may want to give you something you may not want. So everything that is donated to the city that's going to be used at that park has got to be on the agenda. And it's kind of like he was saying, nobody's recognizing him. I think you get recognized a lot to be on the agenda and, you know, the donation be on the agenda. I, I wasn't aware of the plaque and all that. I was just trying to find it, getting clarification as far as the donation of children in the community. Was that improper? No, it just, yeah. not improper. It just needs to go through. If it's meant to stay in a public facility owned by the city, it's got to be accepted by the city. Okay. And yeah, real quick, I, I put the, I, every, whenever we lock up things, I put it up, you know, so I, I go out there every, each day, I'm making sure all that stuff is put up so nobody just walks off you know, Right, there you go. That's so those, you know. were those boxed, or were those basketballs meant to be locked up? Well, I, I lock them up in the bathroom. So I so I go gather them all out because you know they're all over the park. I gather them all up, put them up. This is every night. The bathrooms are locked at 4 p.m. every night, and then when my guys get back to work at 6 a.m. the next morning, they unlock the bathrooms and bring the basketballs out, so they're not just out for somebody to walk through the park, especially at nighttime, just walk off with them. 
I think Councilman Elvin's point, I mean, and maybe we need to clarify with Mr. Torchson what his intent was. If he's intending it to stay there and be the city property to be used by the children out there, then yes, we need to accept it. If he means for it to be used and take it home and kept by private citizens. Absolutely, just a little discussion. Right. Brother Ramona, Ms. Ramona, and Russell, I appreciate your attention to Mr. Joe uh, Harrington's issue up there, 900 Spanish Oaks. Myself and Council College went up there, took a look at it. I don't know, I, you know, I'm not clear on whose responsibility it, it is at this point. We're kind of trending towards maybe it's our responsibility. But my concern at this point is if it is our responsibility, uh, it's becoming a safety hazard for him. So I would request that we expedite as quickly as possible on that issue. Yes, sir. I have them going back out to uh, video that sewer line to make sure it's not compromised. They did it last November and it was fine. But I'm having them go back out just to make sure that it's not the well, city. I appreciate your quick response on that because I know you've been out there. Mr. Pendergore, are you here? Were you, were you the one we spoke the other day in reference to the issues of crime by uh, neighborhood watch and the crimes happening? Were you ever able to get a hold of the chief in reference to your issues? Sergeant uh, called me. He was the one that was uh, following up on it. He did call me and uh, told me that uh, the guy had been arrested. I just spoke to him just when I came in the meeting uh, today and see what else was going on. He had a couple of suggestions that was going to happen, but I didn't get a chance to talk about it. I just want to make sure you had that opportunity because you had a lot to say to me. And uh, that's what the chief's there for. He's there for you to bring your problems to. And uh, just want to make sure you had that opportunity. Uh, chief, uh, I'm getting a lot of requests for that neighborhood watch meeting. Are we any closer to having that? Yeah, so the block. One of the block captains put together a meeting on June 16th at the uh, Martin Luther King Baptist Church. Mm, is that the right one? I think that is the right one. And another one to the conflicts for the notify that my command staff would not be able to attend that one due to the other one we're starting up. Um, they are aware, they said they didn't need the police department there. They were just doing the regular meeting, which is standard practice with the watch program once it's up and running. Well, a lot of our requests are the getting the opportunity to know what the new staff plan is to combat crime. They want to speak to the law enforcement command staff. I, I would make well, a request. I'm not going to give out because it gives away what we're doing. Oh, I know, well, what, I know how it works, but I'm saying they want to see the plan is from the police that they want to speak to the law enforcement command. Well, it sounds like you're asking for a town hall meeting rather than a mm -hmm. well, whatever format or form it needs to be where they have the opportunity to speak to the command where staff. Are these people? Hey, yeah. They're all here. over social media just uh, venting on social media. There's some way to you can get contact with them to set this up. Yeah. Sir? Because there's some way you can set this up. Well, that would be the responsibility for your neighborhood watch command to set something up. Uh, seems like you're more aware of how many people are involved. Well, because they're asking me the questions where they need to be going through the command staff of the police department. But, but what I'm trying to figure out, because like Rusty brought some people in here, and they were only, neighborhood watch was a kind of a separate issue. They were concerned about what was going on in their community and they wanted to hear what steps to the degree he could say it that the police department was taking. And so I don't know how that, that's Rusty, what they want to hear. All right, but that's not an able to watch meeting. And so I'm saying at Rusty, you need to we need to do what Rusty you need to do the same thing. We need to have a town hall meeting. We need to stand yeah. yeah. probably in the middle of July. It's not, it's not just meetings. my board, it's all the boards. Well, that's what I mean. We need to go to each ward and have a town hall meeting and call it something else, but still. 
we have a date set for my area right in the meeting and i thought y'all had one too but that's not the same case no it was there was confusion because it was like the same day they thought initially the one on june 16th was going to be the one the hickory hill area but it was it was more bluff road right. from the elementary school to gucci van cleve right. primarily well, i think that's what set set it off is that they were under the impression that they were having a neighborhood watch meeting and then when it didn't happen that's when it, it set their concerns in the motion. Yeah, whoever the block captain is, Sergeant Humphrey's talked to, said that he didn't need us there. They were just having a regular meeting. Well, all that being said, I just request that there be an opportunity for the public to meet the new staff. I mean, it's a whole new staff. And to find out what your plan of action is to, to combat the, the problems they're, they're addressing with the council. Excuse me, so you're going to call a, a, a town hall meeting? I'm going to work with Councilman Elvin and the mayor. We'll set up a town hall meeting in the next month or two. You know, during the summer months, we're going to try to schedule something for up there in the Hickory Hill area. And, and, and it's really important that there's some kind of structure that uh, everybody is, knows what to do. Because it doesn't seem to be a way that you get uh, a reaction to it. I mean, everybody wants to do their job. But uh, there are so many people that complain, but then you ask and then some, well, they don't call the police or, or whatever, and we don't get good resolution to it. And it's, it's things like you got to lock your car now. Everybody in, in the whole neighborhood knows that you just got to lock your car. You know, and I got to lock up buildings. But this is something that should be something that pervades to the whole group of people there. With the, with the city government involved in it and the police department so that we're all on the same page. Because I'm just hearing that there's somebody else talking about somebody that's uh, uh, walking in the yard, living in their stuff. Right. What we, what we normally do when we do a town hall meeting is we try to get a representative from every department in the city. So you have somebody at the city manager's department, the planning department, the police department, the fire department. So that way, any questions that are raised, we go ahead and try to answer that or at least take those comments down and return with responses. So we're going we're gonna to work together and get a town hall meeting scheduled where we can try to get all the departments there at one time, a representative from each department and have the residents from from that area and I mean we need to have one in Ward 1, Ward 2, we need to have them at all the wards so we're working towards that Mr. Fred. We have a public relations department. So, citizen comments, we'll answer that after but yes we do. Oh. Councilman Alpin, do you have anything new? Well, the uh, wave pros already left but I've had people question on trash pickup I guess this would be for the city manager or since he's left or remote. I'm not sure who it's fall under. But uh, apparently people are putting trash out or leaves and debris out there on the road and they're picking up the trash but they're leaving the debris. Is there a specific day that they come back and follow up on that or they they're supposed to come the same day. They come with a different truck. They will take up to six cubic yards at a time. So if the debris pile is larger than six cubic yards, then they will pick it up in several different rounds. So it may remain there. If it's a very large pile, it could remain for several So days. is that Waste Pro's responsibility or is that the it's city quality? Yes, now, granted, and leaves are supposed to be bags. That's right. Well, they were. They had several bags of okay. leaves, and they were left. Well, and if they want to call the Public Works Department, and they can put it in a work order to have it. I well, I figured it was due to the, the holiday, and they had and a lot of large been. volume. Right. They were running a day behind. That's all I have. That's like one more thing that I forgot, Ms. Nancy. Um, Martin Bluff Road, I haven't seen much action going on with the work on Martin Bluff Road. Uh, maybe one day they were working that I noticed. Um, not much going on there in the, since they left the project and supposed to have come back and got back on it full time. I know something was going on last week, particularly Friday, because they've been trying to locate the, I don't even know what to even call it, some kind of valve or something. I think that's the day I've seen your people out there with them 
But yeah. other, other than that, I hadn't seen they, much going on. They're today, and I believe tomorrow they're tying in an eight-inch water line. Yeah, because the apartment, the condos will be without water. Yeah, Homestead yeah. will be without water tomorrow, and so will uh, Pleasant Hill. Yeah. Um, they're going to have to tie in an eight-inch water line. So they're doing water times right now is what they're doing. And they had several cut off last week. Yes. It just doesn't seem like there's been much activity going on on the right of way, I guess, is looking at it. They can't do answer. anything other than one water line at a time. I don't have no more people working on the project. I, I, I can't answer to that. I can find out from Brenda tomorrow. There. Well, I can answer it for you. They got people out there tying water lines in. The rest of the crew's working on another job somewhere else in another part of the state of the county or something like they've been doing for the last three weeks. But as long as we're keeping up with the days and, and how far they behind schedule, and they're going to come back with all these rain days on us, but we need to throw these days at them that they wasn't there working full time. That's all. Okay. Um. Thank you, Ms. Shanksy, for y'all's hard work and um, Trustee Bilbo and Councilman Anderson. You know, we've heard about Baco Park here, and I want to thank Councilman Jackson. Um, he volunteers every day to go lock that part up, park up because it's not our city staff. We don't have them to work at those hours. He's dedicated to our youth and our community and he goes above and beyond. Yes, there's been vandalism there, but yes, we have cameras. Yes, they now know they really work and they know they're not fake. Kudos to our police chief and his department and staff working with our recreation director for y'all finding the minor child who did the vandalism and I know youth court will hold them accountable and that is out, as, out of our jurisdiction. But the, justice will prevail in that. Also, it's more than just there. It happened at our city park. Brand new equipment, we've not even had a ribbon cutting out there. Spray painted, vandalism, guess what? We have cameras there. You're gonna be caught. But when you come from a sister city and you vandalize our parks, you're gonna pay the price. If you're a minor, your parents are responsible for you. They'll have to pay. Guess what? Kudos to our police department and our recreation staff. They were able to locate them very fast. So kudos, our cameras. I want the citizens to know our cameras are working. Our police department is working. They are not not working. So I want you all not to leave here tonight thinking we're the only place that don't have crime. It's all over. Yes, absolutely. Our reporting it on social media, as you've heard for up here tonight, that does no good, none. Our police department is not monitoring neighborhood pages, next door out. They're not monitoring a neighborhood social media page. Our city department staff is not monitoring those sites. If happen, elected official sees it, we report it to them. But if you see, as Mr. Pendergrass, you saw, they're not reporting. When you ask them if they report it to the police department, they say no. Well, what good is it gonna do you? You have to call our police department. They're there 24 seven. To answer the question about the parks, if somebody feels insecure, our recreation director has some signage on order. It will have Goche Police Department's number on there. Somebody at any time, if they feel insecure down there or not, like something might happen, they can call that number at any time and our dispatch will get an officer down there so they will feel secure and safe. They will investigate it. So you don't hesitate to call the police department. They're here to work for our citizens and they will continue. They are partnering, if you did not hear, but I'll let the police chief state it again. Um, chief Bevers, if you would like, you went to a chief thing with our governor and he told you, you can address the staff if you would like, the citizens here and um, advise them and give them an update because I think it's good that we reiterate that in your partnerships with the other chiefs in our local Jackson County area. Well, basically, the governor is sending down the Mississippi Bureau of Narcotics Agents for the BMHP, so it's going to be happening soon. And they're going to be targeting certain individuals that we can know that are responsible for a lot of this uptake of violence that you see. Some known couple game members. They're not just living here, they're going from here, past Mula, Moss Point, everybody's just traveling around from the designs. It's a lot of young kids. So they're going to be targeting that in the very near future. I want to give away what we're doing. 
to be seeing some results. They're going after the bad guys, and they're going to get them. Um, and as you just heard, um, they are partnering with other agencies, and our state officials do recognize it's a coastal problem. Not It's heavy in the coastal areas of the state, so they are giving assistance, as you just heard. So don't think that it, your concerns are being neglected or we're not addressing them, because we are um, addressing those concerns. Also, I'd like to thank Chesty and her staff, the movie night, um, and um, our planning director, Scott Ankerson, was our entertainment at Aztecas before movie night. So um, he is dedicated to our city and his department as Councilman Glott and the rest of the board. You've heard tonight, we've had a lot of abatements and code issues on our agenda to vote on because we are dedicated to cleaning up this city and we want it to be inviting and we want you to feel like you live in a beautiful, clean city. Um, so if you have any code issues or any Anything you would like to report, you're more than welcome to call in and report them and they'll take note and open a case on it. Um, Chastity, the movie night once again was good. You're um, looking forward to the farmer's market and y'all continue to do a good job. Also, we got a compliment on Facebook. One of our officers helped another officer who needed assistance this past weekend. And it was, I was tagged um, on social media um, with a local business owner thanking that officer for his service. So if you would thank that officer on behalf of myself and the council and tell him we appreciate his commitment to go trade. Um, our city clerk and her department's doing a fine job. All of our departments, I don't want to leave anyone out. Public works, um, when they get a call, they're going out and addressing them. We know we have a lot of issues in the, that department, but their um, ownership of their company gives them so many employees. So unfortunately, they do the best they can with the amount of employees they um, have. Um, the recreation, the fire department, they've been doing some training and stuff over there um, and been doing some Facebook, social media, and we appreciate all y'all. Our legal team has done a great job, Mr. Danos. I can't thank our staff enough. Um, they don't get thanked. Um, they hear all the complaining like we hear, but we heard some thank yous tonight and that means a lot. Your thank yous um, don't go unnoticed, but your concerns, we all have the same concerns. And once again, um, Ms. Yancey, we will turn it over to you to your city manager comments. Okay, so the first thing I have is, it's an uh, order which you all have a copy of, but um, it's adding a uh, odor to the lift station by the Public Utility Department. Um, the cost is $17,950. This is your second change order in this project, and it's near, nearing completion. But with the increased volume flowing through that lift station, the scrubber is badly needed. We need to go ahead and get it on and get it, get it put in. Marks on the phone if you have any questions. Is that because that's a pretty busy intersection uh, there? I think it's because they increased the volume of the sewer coming through there. Is that not correct? Yes. Well, I, I know yeah, it doesn't. And Ron, see, this is a high traffic area. It's also where the public goes to pay their water bill. So we, we decided it would be a good idea to install it on this one. That's a good reason. <laughs> so we didn't realize, did we not realize that in the beginning that we needed it or we just thought we didn't need it and now we realize we need it? I, I guess the answer to that is yes. Once, once all the flow started going through it, we obviously realized the odor and decided we needed to do something about it. Okay. Okay. Do we have um, a motion to approve a change order number two for the Old Spanish Trail Gotre Van Cleve Road Sewer Improvements Restore Project? Uh, so moved. We have second. a motion by Councilman College, a second by Councilman Anderson. Any discussion? Starting with Councilman George? Not a. Councilman Jackson? No. Councilman Galat? Just eliminate the smell. <laughs> <laughs> Councilman um, College? 
I do notice this is a restore project. How much were these funds from the Restore Act that we got for this project? No. <coughs> this was Restore Act. How many? How much funds do we get from the Restore Act for this project? Two point three million. Two point three million. Plus, they added a little more in your first change order. Remember, DEQ added a little more because of the cost increase between the ward and uh, them being able to start. So it's right at a little over two point three million. And that is BP funds for store, correct? Yeah, that is BP funds. Yeah. That's all I have. But, but, but this particular 17000 is strictly being paid for That's by the correct. city. Yeah, but That's I'm just correct. saying this project is a restore project. Yeah. So. Councilman Anderson, do you have anything? No, that's all. Councilman Elvin. No comment. All in favor? Motion carries. And I have Go ahead, Ms. Shanksen. Um, I received a call from Joe Emil and the county road manager, and as you know, he has been working on, and as they have, the county has said that they would raise Graveline Road at the low point on the north side of the tracks, and uh, the project has been, was approved by the, their board last year, I believe. Well, he called me and said he is ready to begin work on Monday if he wants to put the signs out tomorrow. And he is going to raise that low point in there three feet. Um, so he just wanted to make sure that the council was aware and was okay with it. I talked to staff about it this morning and advised them. So um, Joe told me to call him and let him know if y'all were all kind of upset with that. I had not to do it. Yes. Yeah, but I want to make sure, Mr. Pete, did you hear? Mr. Pete, did you hear? No, sir, I did. Okay. Joe O'Neill, the county road manager, called the city manager yesterday, and he wants to start on Monday with raising the road at the West River Marina area three feet um, to help with the high tide. You can get through that area and it especially helped when the bridge is under construction at Lamont. So he's wanting to start putting out signs tomorrow and start on it on Monday. It'll be about 30 days, maybe less, depending on weather. Well, I appreciate your interest in that. That is really not a problem. And what people don't realize when they're going through in that car, salt water is frozen. You see the bottom of my truck up and going through salt water. And we deserve more than that, Mayor. Good. Well, I'm glad you'll be excited. They're going to start on it. Right. Okay. Is that all you have, Ms. Shanks? Exactly. Okay. Thank you. That brings us to our city clerk comments. Ms. Montgomery, you have anything? And that brings us to our city attorney. Mr. Dennis, you have anything? Yes, sir. Thank okay. You. Do we have a motion to reset? <laughs> Do we have a motion to recess until June 21st, 2022 at 6.30 p.m.? So moved. Motion by Councilman Jackson. Second. We, second by Councilman George. All in favor? Motion carries. We're recessed.